So let me start off this video by saying that I'm not supposed to be on this train right now. Well, at least I wasn't until literally three hours earlier. You're probably really confused right now, so let me explain why. The day before, I had arrived in Chicago on a Southwest Airlines flight from Dallas. The initial plan, assuming everything ran to schedule, was to arrive at Chicago O'Hare by 5.15 p.m. From O'Hare, I'd take the CTA Blue Line train to downtown Chicago, and then at 8 p.m., I would catch the Amtrak City of New Orleans train back home to Champaign. We didn't get off the plane in Chicago till about 6 p.m. The CTA Blue Line takes roughly an hour to get from O'Hare to downtown, so theoretically we still would have made our train back home. But my friend who I was traveling with wanted to see if we could get a rental car back to Champaign instead, despite the fact that our Amtrak tickets had already been booked. This wasted a lot of time, and we didn't get on the CTA Blue Line until 7.15pm. O'Hare and Clinton Street Station, where we were supposed to get off, are about 18 miles apart, so on the surface, one would think that it shouldn't take that long to get from one point to the other, right? Well, it does. Of course it does. The CTA takes 45 minutes to travel 18 miles. Yeah, I understand that includes intermediate stops, but come on, it's literally 18 miles. We ended up arriving at Clinton Street around 8.10 p.m. The Amtrak City of New Orleans departs Chicago at 8.05 p.m. The past two times I've taken this train this summer, it's always departed over an hour late. Guess what? The one day I needed this train to be late. Of course, it departed exactly on time that night. Thankfully, my friend has a lot of family members in the Chicago area, and one of his relatives was kind enough to host us for the night at his place. The next day came around and I needed to get home as soon as possible. The only feasible option was, again, to take Amtrak home. This time by myself. There used to be a morning southbound train that left Chicago at 8.15am, though this has been suspended since last year. The only remaining options were the 4.05pm train or wait again for the 8.05pm train. Three hours before boarding, I booked a one-way business class ticket on the 4.05pm Illini train for $59. To get to Union Station, I caught this Metro Milwaukee District North Line train that I'm on right now, and that's how I ended up here. The focus of this video, however, is the confusing state of Amtrak business class on the Saluki and Illini corridor trains. It's just so weird, and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So after that super long intro, we pick up today's journey arriving into Chicago Union Station's North Concourse, where we see what I think is the Amtrak Empire Builder getting ready to depart. The reason I'm pointing this out is because the two locomotives leading the train are from two different generations. The lead locomotive is a P42DC, and attached to it is one of the brand new Siemens ALC42 engines, which are due to replace the P42s eventually. Just thought that was worth mentioning. Our Metro train was pushed by this MP36PH-3C locomotive number 411. Metro has 27 of these diesel electric locomotives, and on the adjacent track is locomotive 405, which is painted in the special Milwaukee Road Heritage livery. Two of Metro's routes, the Milwaukee North and Milwaukee West, are former Milwaukee Road train lines, so this locomotive actually pays tribute to that fallen railroad. I had about an hour to spend in Union Station, and with my business class ticket, I got access to the Amtrak Metropolitan Lounge. Anyone with an Amtrak business class or sleeper ticket gets access to this lounge. Compared to the last time I was here, the food and drink selection was significantly better because there were actually food and drinks on offer this time, ranging from coffee to sodas to chips and cookies. The lounge overall is a nice and quiet place to relax and wait for your train. Unlike last time though, the upper level was also open, so I decided to spend my layover there. The upper level is nothing special, it's just a bunch of seating areas, but overall a nice alternative to the crowded gate area. Now, for certain trains, Amtrak doesn't announce when boarding begins, shockingly enough, so be sure to leave the lounge and reach your departure gate about 30 minutes before departure time, maybe even a little earlier to be safe. Our train today is number 393, the southbound Illini, which runs all the way to Carbondale. Amtrak operates two state-supported trains on this route, 
the Saluki, which runs from Carbondale to Chicago in the morning, and the Illini, which runs Chicago to Carbondale in the evening. There used to be both a morning southbound Saluki to Carbondale and an evening northbound Illini to Chicago, but this round trip has again been suspended for a while, like I mentioned earlier. The Saluki and Illini route is roughly 310 miles from Chicago to Carbondale, serving Homewood, Kankakee, Gilman, Rantoul, Champaign, Mattoon, Effingham, Centralia, and DuCoin before finally reaching Carbondale. Both trains use the same equipment, and fun fact, the route between Chicago and Carbondale serves three major universities in Illinois, aside from those in Chicago. These are the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, Eastern Illinois University, and Southern Illinois University Carbondale. In fact, the Saluki and Illini trains are actually named after the mascots of two of these universities. The Saluki was named for the SIU Salukis, and the Illini was named after the University of Illinois Fighting Illini. Even though this is the Illini service, our locomotive today still shows Saluki on the front for some reason. The locomotive leading today is Siemens SC44 Charger number 4633. These locomotives entered service on this route in 2017 along with other Amtrak Midwest routes. Now what's interesting about the Saluki and Illini trains right now is that they don't run with regular Amtrak single level coach cars like they used to. They've actually been using Superliner coach cars, which are normally used on the long distance trains since around 2020 or so. Why they do this, you may ask? Well, basically Amtrak doesn't own the tracks they operate on between Chicago and Carbondale, and this is true for most of their network across the US. Canadian National Railroad, or CN, owns these tracks, and the maximum track speed on this line is 79 miles an hour. For some odd reason, CN decided to downgrade the max speed of Amtrak single-level coach cars on this route. The Amtrak Superliners, for whatever reason, were exempted from the speed restriction, and they are still allowed to operate at the maximum 79 miles per hour speed limit. As such, Amtrak has kept the Superliners operating on this route since 2020 or something like that. But there's a huge catch to this. The single-level coaches had dedicated business class sections. The Superliner coach cars do not. Business class just doesn't exist here. As I've shown before, the Superliner coaches have a 2x2 two two layout, and even though this is coach class, the seats themselves are so much better than any domestic airline business class we have here in the US. But I'll talk more about the business class fiasco once we depart Chicago. While reversing out of Union Station, we pass through Amtrak's coach yard, and here we get a pretty nice look at the future of Amtrak's Midwestern trains. These are the brand new, well, actually this isn't brand new, okay, here are the brand new Siemens Venture cars. These are actually already in service on select Amtrak trains, including the Lincoln Service, Missouri River Runner, and Pier Marquette. These new Venture cars will come in dedicated coach class, business class, and cafe car variations, and time will tell once they enter service on our Illini and Saluki trains. As we breeze through the south side of Chicago, here's a better look at the Superliner coach class seat. Each seat comes with a large adjustable tray table and two power outlets on the window side. The legroom is, of course, fantastic with no issues here. The seats have an insane amount of recline, although speaking from personal experience, the seat controls are usually either broken or very stiff. The bottom lever brings up the footrest while the top lever reclines the seat. Finally, above each seat are call buttons and reading lights. No air vents here, unfortunately. 
There is no dedicated cafe car on this train for the time being, so the makeshift cafe is located in the lower level of one of the coach cars. Today, it was in the last car of the train. There's plenty of snacks and drinks available for purchase along with some areas to sit. Business class passengers receive a complimentary drink as well, so I decided to take a bottle of water. It was actually here in the cafe that I asked the attendant where business class actually is on the train, and she directed me to the rearmost section of the last car. It turns out Amtrak actually blocks out a certain section of the last car for business class, which I thought was a good move given the limited resources. The seats are the exact same as coach though, so hard product wise, nothing has changed. The only difference is that there's less people and the overall experience feels a lot nicer. I was pleasantly surprised to see that Wi-Fi was available today since historically the Amtrak Superliners have never had Wi-Fi installed on them. To be fair, it didn't really work that well as it used to on the single level cars. This spot right here is the former McKnight Road Railroad Crossing in Bourbonnet, Illinois. On March 15, 1999, the southbound Amtrak City of New Orleans collided with a semi-truck at this very crossing. 11 passengers lost their lives in that derailment, and seven years later, the crossing was permanently closed. As mentioned earlier, the maximum track speed on this line is 79 miles per hour. So you can imagine my confusion when my watch speedometer recorded us traveling at 85 miles per hour at one point. Maybe it was just acting up. One thing to be aware of whenever you take Amtrak is that a lot of the equipment is fairly old, so it's not uncommon to see parts of the seat completely broken. Who knows when that's going to be fixed. Gentlemen, Sarah, the coach and downstairs for exiting. This stop is Rantoul. Rantoul.
So as we near Champagne, let's summarize the Amtrak business class experience on the Illini and Saluki trains. It's not that bad, I'll say that. For the price you pay, you get lounge access, a free drink, and a dedicated section in the coach car. For the time being, of course, the hard product, i.e. the seat, is the exact same as coach, but then again, the seat itself is perfectly fine. For the added amenities, I would say that the extra upcharge for business class is worth it, but if you're only looking for a nicer seat, in that case, avoid booking business class on this route for the time being. As we pull into Champagne, you might be able to notice where there used to be another set of tracks and another platform. These were removed a long time ago, ever since Canadian National decided to single track the entire line, which was really unfortunate. Anyway, we've reached the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like, comment with any feedback, and subscribe for more exciting videos. That's all I have for today. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you next time.